his arms for his perfection. With a clear stream of reason, has not lost its way into the dreary desert sands of dead night. When the mind is led forward by thee, you have a widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom, my father. Let
without health insurance, exploding medical costs, exploding drug costs. Their policy is to do more of the same. They want health care costs decided, the health care policy decided by HMOs, health insurance companies, and drug companies. And they believe they just get enough money, somehow they do the right thing. So they pass a drug program, which actually takes drug coverage away from some seniors, gives a $40 million subsidy to the drug companies, and makes it illegal for the government to bargain with drug companies for high volume, low discounts, just the way the Veterans Administration does today. Now, if you want more of that, you can vote for this. But I'm telling you, John Kerry has given us a great health care plan, and he's got some ideas I wish I'd have thought of when I was president. Even the people who aren't for him, the health insurance companies, admit that his plan, if enacted, will save the average family pretty much over a thousand dollars in the first couple of years of All right. they'll be cheaper than they are. Yeah. Everybody in Oakland that will allow small business and individuals who don't have health insurance to buy into the federal plan, which covers me and Senator Bingerman and Congressman Udall, <laughs> then we'll have coverage for people who don't have it. I like to buy into the presidential debates and the president kept saying, oh, he just wants the government to take over health care. Who does he think insures him? <laughs> If you're young and single and healthy, you think you're going to live forever, you can buy a little catastrophic coverage, but not very much. You got one or not, you better get John Kerry. There are two issues that I don't think have been well discussed in this campaign through no fault of ours. And I want to talk about them because they matter up here. The first is the energy and environment. I could not believe that in the last two days, there was only one question asked about the issue which may do as much to shape our economic future and the health of our planet and the future of our children and grandchildren as any other. And you don't have to take my word for it. You can ask anybody who knows. This administration has been the most hostile administration to basic environmental protection of anyone in my lifetime. to continuing the old energy policy that got us in the mess we're in. They, want, they really think somehow we can get enough oil and coal to get us out of the fix we're in. With the economy down, we are importing more foreign oil today than we were the day I left office. Now, John Kerry has given us a plan that I might add will make maximum use of the labs in New Mexico. Yeah. Energy labs. That will give you a chance to create good jobs here in solar energy, wind energy, other alternatives. <laughs> that can create over a million jobs in America, that can clean the environment, that can reduce global warming, that can make us respected in the world again, and give our kids and grandkids a better future. It's good for the economy, it's good for the environment. And nobody talks about it enough, you ought to talk about it between now and future. And because I saw a story today that said that 11% of the people who voted for President Bush last time, according to a poll a couple of weeks ago, were going to vote for Senator Kerry. Woo! But it come in. Seven percent of the people who voted for Al Gore were thinking about voting for President Bush. They were not happy with him. Now, none of these people like the spoiling the environment. None of these people agree with the economic policy. None of these people agree with not funding Leave No Child Behind and underfunding Head Start and kicking 500,000 kids out of after school to give me a tax cut. They don't agree with that. Why in the wide world do they do that? Why? Because they are under the misimpression 
that we cannot afford to change leaders while we're fighting terror and dealing with the problems in Iraq. That's it. There is no other reason. Now, here's what I want to tell you about that. I want you to listen to me carefully. I know it's a rally, I know it's cold, I know you want to cheer, but this could turn the election in New Mexico. You listen to me. There are four things John Kerry has said about security. Now, you ask yourself if you really think they'll make us less safe. Number one, he's the only person running for president that says, vote for me and I'll have 40,000 people in the army, get more international cooperation, and send enough people into Iraq so that we won't lose as many soldiers and we won't fail to protect ammunition dumps that can turn them into bomb factories for terrorists. Nobody else has said that. Number two, he said, vote for me and I will double the size of the special forces who do our work in wild places looking for terrorists and we'll do a better job of chasing after bin Laden and other terrorists. We won't have to depend upon the Pakistanis and Afghan tribal or someone else to do it. We've got six times as many troops in Iraq as we do in Afghanistan. No one else has said that. Number three, he has said, vote for me and I'll invest more money, time, and effort in trying to eliminate the possibility that weapons of mass destruction can fall into the wrong hands. Not just in Iran and North Korea, but also in Russia. It still has the biggest stops of unprotected nuclear and biological weapons. Now today, over three years after 9-11, less than one in four of the Russian nuclear stocks are fully protected. And this administration, on more than one occasion, as Jeff Newman, as Tom Udall, has tried to cut spending to do that program right. Only John Kerry said, vote for me and I'll do more of it. And fourth, and this is important to me, because I live in New York, which has suffered more than any other state in the country from terror. <laughs> John Kerry said, vote for me and I will invest money in smart homeland security. The administration and the Republican Congress defeated a measure in the House that would have doubled cargo inspections at ports and airports in the face of a security report that said we're only checking 5% of them and there is no deterrent effect unless you check 10 to 20%. That's a big deal to you. It should be a big deal to you. And I think you ought to, I want to say this two things. When I ran for president in my history, I had a bunch of generals and admirals for me, and I'm going to be sharp. I thought, here I am challenging to become the president, and I got all these military people who really believe in the way I look at the world. There are a lot more retired generals and admirals supporting John Kerry, including a whole lot of Republicans. <laughs> But when he got out, he supported Bob Dole in 96, and he supported George Bush in 2000. He's the most vocal military supporter John Kerry has. Why? Because he knows he's got a better security plan for America's future. and say, look, only Kerry wants to give us a bigger army and get more help from other countries in Iraq. Only Kerry wants to double the size of the special forces. Only Kerry will increase our efforts on weapons of mass destruction, and only Kerry is going to have an adequate homeland security plan. This administration wants to take 88,000 cops off the street. Kerry wants to put them back on the street and put 100,000 more firemen. That may not sound like a big deal in Santa Fe. If you were in New York on September the 12th, you would know how important having those cops and firemen in the street are. Oh, yeah. so, this is the point that my wife can make better than me because she represents New York in the Senate. But most people in New Mexico probably think, oh, well, New York's going to carry because it's a big liberal Democratic state. Not true. New York has a Republican governor, a Republican state senate, a Republican mayor of New York City. Long Island has traditionally been Republican. Upstate has traditionally been Republican. New York is going overwhelmingly for John Kerry because we know more about security than anybody else in the country. There's only one party in this campaign trying to keep people from voting on election day. <laughs> only one party 
tried to shut down the Indian Health Service here from registered voters in New Mexico. Only one party put a provision in a recent bill to pass Congress trying to ban voter registration in public housing projects. Only one party tried to take 30,000 poor people off the rolls in Ohio and would have done it if the federal judge hadn't stopped them. Only one party sent a bunch of very well manicured young congressional staffers to Florida trying to run people off the polling places on Tuesday, and it's not us. Now, as a general rule, this is one of Clinton's laws of politics. <laughs> If you're in an election and one candidate trusts you to vote and the other doesn't, you probably ought to be for the one who wants you to vote. <laughs> I know John Kerry. Hillary and I were invited by him to visit to vacation and then spend a couple of days with him on more than one occasion on Nashon Island. We were vacationing for the summer. We rode horses all day long and got up in the hills and talked alone. I have absolute confidence that he can protect this country, that he can make us proud. I know he will protect the environment and grow the economy. I know he will do what he says. The differences between the two candidates are profound and deep and honestly held. And you got to decide who you're for. But you have to tell these people in New Mexico, I'm just telling you, this whole election could be right on this state. Don't let anybody who knows better go in and vote against John Kerry on the security issue, because it is not an issue. Remember the points I made. Go out and give America a new beginning. Give us a fresh start in the world. Give us a fresh start at home. Give our children the future they deserve. Thank you. God bless you.